Good evening and all. welcome to Seaburn once again. As you know, this is the literally heaven of Astoria. And today we have one of my own personal friends and a brother and a mentor in many ways to me, uh, Dr. Professor Chika Onyani. Thank you all. Now, um, well, uh, my book, Capitalist Nigger, is a book that has um, impacted a lot of people all over the world you know i have i have traveled all over the world um, and uh, one of the things that that people uh, like about the book a lot is um, is uh, the the spider web doctrine everybody wants to know what is this doctrine people say oh that onyani was very angry you know, but I'm still very angry. angry. So, <laughs> 10 years after the book came out, I'm still very angry. Why am I very angry? Because um, the situation that I wrote about hasn't improved. In fact, it has even regenerated, degenerated, and uh, we black people have uh, regressed a great deal. You know, from from what it it was um, years ago, and uh, so uh, uh, when when I looked at what we were going through, so I decided that it is time for us, for for me at least, for my own self, it was necessary for me to 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 tell my people to be very frank with my people and uh, in being frank I wanted to make sure that they understand that nobody nobody uh, is responsible for what is happening to the black community other than the black community itself and uh, and and uh, the, the first page of, uh, of the book talked about the fact that uh, we as black people are always whining about what other people have done to us. Uh, so uh, that is, that is um, why I wrote the book and uh, everybody is always saying, oh, how can you use this, as uh, Dr. Chekwa said, how could you use this pejorative word? The word that uh, most, uh, the majority of black people hate very much, even Oprah. Uh, initially, Oprah's office requested it for the book, but you know, when it was hardcover. And uh, when they got it, we started calling them. They didn't return our calls anymore. And eventually, in one of her programs, she said she hates the use of the word nigger she doesn't want to hear it so at that time i understood why we did not get a call back after we uh, they requested the book and we sent it to them so the book uh, as i said uh, so why did i use uh, the word um, um, nigger because uh, the thing is that as i said in the book the first thing i wrote in the book is a, is a proverb from my place that it is what it is not what you call me but what i answer to that matters most so calling me a nigger if you're a white man i will join you and say nigger 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 you know so what does it it's not going to do anything to me you know so it doesn't really matter and moreover um some of us decided that this word should be made irrelevant uh, because why because you know uh, when white people use it we go to the barricades and we you know some of us feel I feel we are making white people superior to us that we should not be doing that so that is why I decided to use the word too that 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 is totally I, I mean we need to make it irrelevant uh, that is why I, um, I I decided to use it. So, and in terms of uh, the spider web um, uh, doctrine, um, 
you, 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 you people have uh, seen the Indians from East India. And, uh, you know, have you, ever, have you gone to unemployment office? Have you ever seen somebody from East India, you know, on unemployment line? Of course not. They, they, they don't go there. And uh, have, you, have you ever been to McDonald's and seen an Indian eating? You can see a Chinese. Sometimes you might see a Chinese, but you never see an Indian uh, in a McDonald's. Why? Because all their thing is about Indian. You know, it, it, doing everything Indian. Uh, even wearing their ill-fitting uh, suits. They, they prefer that than uh, Western suits. So, so why why is this doctrine based on the Indian uh, on the Indian people? Because I I I went out and did a study to find out why are the Indians so successful. And uh, the the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the New uh, the the uh, Washington Post, and uh, you know Fortune uh, magazine, Forbes. They had all written about the Indian, how successful they are. So I had to go out and find out why is that? Why is it that, you know, according to these newspapers and magazines, why is it that uh, the Indians uh, control more than 78% uh, of, uh, 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 of the motel business in America? Why is it that they control over 72% of the gas stations in America, and of course, you know, they control most of 7-Eleven uh, now. Uh, and, and Dunkin' Donuts. And, well, Dunkin' Donuts, but uh, the, this one, those ones were the ones uh, that had been doc documented. Why, why is it that they, 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 they have been able to, to use that? And moreover, in the New York area, you know, uh, who, who controls the, the limo li limousine and taxi business? The, the medallion business is practically, when it was uh, being sold for $30,000, that is when they started buying it. Now, you, with uh, half a million, you might not even be able to get a medallion, you know, because it's a lifetime thing. Uh, so, uh, so you see, and uh, they have made a lot of this investment. And people say, oh, the Indians came here, they are fair, their governments gave them money. And it's a big lie. The, the government did not give them any money. Uh, in fact, uh, I remember when an Indian in New York here yeah, started. Uh, uh, he 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 bought a uh, he opened a, uh, a a newspaper stand. You know, I I have forgotten where it was. But and then he started opening more news new newsstands, and with the result that. Uh, you know, he was putting a lot of other Indians into in, in business. And uh, some of you, when you go to the airport, you see Hudson News, don't you? I mean, there are so many of them in an airport all over the place. And uh, the Hudson News used to be owned by a Jewish family. And uh, eventually, because these Indians continued to grow, Eventually, the, the, the Jewish family had to sell it to him. And, you know, uh, uh, as I was saying, if you were from East India and you flew into JFK airport, you don't have to come out from the airport before you start work. So far as you know how to count money, you don't, know, you don't have to know how to speak English. So far as you know how to you know, count money and say, this is, uh, oh, uh, what is this? It's, it's $7, $1, or whatever. And you open the cash register and, uh, and put it in. You can start work right from the airport. Or you can say, I don't want, you know, the, the noise of the plane is too much for me. So what, I don't want to do that. You come out, you can start driving a limousine or you can start driving a taxi. Or you don't, you don't want that. You can start making beds at a, at a motel or cleaning at a motel. You don't have to. Nobody, they need you. They will, 
they will find you employment. Or you say you don't want to do that, you know? And so you can start going to pump gas at a gas station. So that is, that is why, how have they become so, so, so successful? And what is this uh, spider web doctrine? And uh, you, you, you know what a spider does. A spider spins its yarn and uh, it waits for a fly to get in there. And when the fly gets in there, what happens? It doesn't come out, does it? No, no. The, the, the spider catches the fly and eats it. So that is, that is what happens in economic terms. So, you know, in economic terms, uh, we, we say that when a dollar comes into a community, that dollar, through what is called in econo economic, uh, uh, economics, what is called the multiplier effect. So it says that every dollar that comes into a community is, is used about eight times in transaction. It generates about eight times, uh, eight dollars in business before it leaves that, that, uh, that community to go to another community. But because of the fact that the Indians patronize themselves, they don't like, you know, as I said, I, I love the Indians. They are very, very, they are the most selfish people. I bet I love them because, you know, I like what they do. Let me just interject and mm -hmm. ask you this question before I forget. Is that really good for a society that is a, pure, a plural society with people from all over angles of the world? Mm -hmm. Is it, is that the, the, uh, the, why do you like most about that style of business no no it's not that i like it i'm just saying you know this is this is, is it good for a society like ours? well it's, it's it might not be good body. but you know uh, you know this world is about the survival of the fittest right. and, and uh you know sometimes uh, we, we 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 say oh darwin uh, when when it is talked about uh, about the survival of the fittest a lot of people say oh but it's the truth. We just like to hide it. Uh, is who is who is strongest uh, survives, and uh, if you can make your society um, a society a successful society, then you should use uh, you should you should make sure your society is successful, because. Uh, right now, as I as I started before, I say you don't see Indians on unemployment lines huh? because they are able to to provide jobs to their people but what is it that we are doing for ourselves you, you know if we continue to just depend on other people to depend on the government has anybody as you rightly as has anybody has i said this is how we are going to encourage the creation of entrepreneurs black businesses so that they can employ our our children the the unemployment rate people 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 uh, talk about oh 16 percent is more than 30 percent in the black community we have to begin to train our young people to to get into uh, the areas where they can easily find jobs that is not what is being discussed. Our people, all the all the black leaders, they are always talking about how government didn't do something for them. How many times have they said, let us talk about the jobs that we can create by training our people, you know, to understand that if they have this kind of skills, they will be they will be on their own. I thank you so much. I thank you all. I appreciate that very much.